As the EFM32 MCUs and EFR32 wireless SOCs grow more complex, the demand for real-time operating systems, or RTOSs, among developers who use these parts will likely grow. Fortunately, with the acquisition of Micrium, Silicon Labs is well prepared to support customers who want to leverage the capabilities of an RTOS and other embedded software components in their projects. In this presentation, we'll consider the software solutions that Micrium offers, we'll learn what makes these products unique, and we'll discuss the licensing options that exist for Silicon Labs customers who are interested in Micrium software. We'll start with a bit of background information on Micrium. The pre-acquisition history of the company, interestingly enough, goes back over 18 years, which is no insignificant amount of time in the constantly changing world of embedded software. Jean Labrosse founded the company in 1999 to help support MicroC OS 2, the successor to the original MicroC OS kernel that he had created seven years earlier. This history is important to many of Micrim's customers and users. Longevity often equates to reliability in embedded software and the kernels that Micrim still offers today have a lineage that extends back to the first MicroCOS release in 1992. Thanks in part to having served developers for such a lengthy period of time, Micrim has achieved top standing in the embedded space. The list of Micrim licensees is filled with respected companies from all over the globe, including several Fortune 100 organizations. With users in academia and the maker community as well, Micrim software has become remarkably popular. The MicroC OS 2 and MicroC OS 3 kernels, for example, have outpaced all of their commercial peers in recent surveys by the event organizer UBM. Standing out from the crowd can be a particular challenge in embedded software, where new providers seem to come and go on an almost daily basis. Over the years, Micrim software has earned its reputation on the basis of three important characteristics, quality source code, thorough documentation, and unsurpassed technical support. We'll come back to each of these later in the presentation. Prior to the acquisition, Micrim's product lineup consisted of the modules listed here. The aforementioned MicroC OS 2 and MicroC OS 3 kernels serve as the foundation for this group. Also referred to as RTOSs, the kernels are, ultimately, multitask schedulers, and they are surrounded by a file system named MicroCFS, a graphical package known as MicroC GUI, and various protocol stacks, such as MicroC TCP IP and MicroC USB device. There has always been a great deal of independence among Micrim's modules. For the most part, developers who choose Micrim can license just those modules that make sense for their project and easily arrive at a custom software platform that is free of unneeded code. Although several of the modules do require the services of a kernel to run properly, there is flexibility even in this area, since the necessary services can be obtained from practically any kernel as long as the proper interface code is available. Like the modules themselves, the teams behind the software have always maintained a degree of independence. Thus, each of the MicroC products has mostly kept its own schedule for releases and updates. In a given year, it's possible for multiple releases of, say, the MicroC TCPIP network stack to occur, while another module, MicroCFS for example, is involved in just one release. In March 2017, Micrim released new versions of many of our software modules, and this release was unique for a couple of reasons. For one, a conscious effort was made prior to the March release to increase the software's level of integration. In other words, Micrim's engineers worked to ensure that software modules function optimally alongside one another. It's still possible, after the release, to license individual components, but the development efforts and the release schedules for the new modules are synchronized. The other change made for the new release is that the modules involved, which collectively are now referred to as Micrim OS, are exclusive to Silicon Labs. This is not to say that Micrim no longer supports other hardware providers. We still offer the full range of MicroC products that existed prior to the Micrim OS release, and will continue to maintain these modules and ensure that they meet the needs of our customers. Micrim OS, though, is intended only for Silicon Labs devices, allowing us to modify the software specifically for those devices and to ultimately bring in wireless stacks and other modules from Silicon Labs to make the OS components part of a larger turnkey software platform. Already, Micrim OS has been integrated with Silicon Labs Gecko SDK and the Simplicity Studio IDE. The integration makes it especially easy to get started with a new project on an EFM32 or EFR32 device. 
Simplicity Studio includes a number of software examples that incorporate MicRim OS, and these can be built and run on Silicon Labs hardware with just a few mouse clicks. Following a successful build, there are a couple of unique tools that can be used with the resulting executable code to accelerate development of applications based on MicRim OS. One of these tools, which was developed by MicRim and has garnered a great deal of attention in the embedded space for its unique capabilities, is MicroC Pro. The other tool, named System View, comes from the debugging experts at Seger and offers developers of applications based on MicRim OS unique RTOS-centric trace capabilities. We'll now consider both of these tools in more detail. MicroC Probe is referred to as a graphical live watch tool, and that name is, in part, intended to highlight similarities with the watch windows that are common in embedded debugging environments. Developers who use MicroC Probe, though, certainly get much more than just a watch window. Whereas watch windows tend to be static, updating only when code execution has been halted, MicroC Pro provides a live, continuously updated view of a system's variables. Additionally, MicroC Pro is a graphical tool. Rather than displaying a table of values, it allows developers to read and write variables through an extensive selection of graphical components, including gauges, switches, and dials. Practically any embedded system can be connected to MicroC Pro, since the tool supports a wide range of communication protocols. Running on a PC, MicroC Probe can connect to an embedded target via TCP IP, RS-232, or USB. The tool also has drivers for a number of popular hardware debuggers, including the Seger J-Link. For developers using Silicon Labs starter kits, the J-Link is an especially appealing option since many of the kits have a built-in version of this debugger. Alongside the J-Link debugger that can be used with MicroC Probe, Seger offers a collection of interesting tools, one of which, System View, can be very helpful for debugging applications based on MicRim OS. System View provides its users with high-level trace information pulled from a connected embedded system. This information, essentially, is a summary of RTOS activity during a given time. It includes records of task switches, semaphore posts, delay calls, and other kernel events. By leveraging the information that System View collects and displays, developers can more easily eliminate challenging bugs and identify performance bottlenecks. Access to helpful tools that accelerate development cycles is certainly one reason for choosing MicRim. But what else influences developers who are trying to decide on an operating system? The answer to that question may be a bit surprising for anyone who's not overly familiar with the embedded software space. There's sometimes a tendency to think that software sells mainly as a result of features and performance. A richer feature set and better performance translates into increased sales. However, in the embedded space, and in particular in the safety critical fields where many of the developers who rely on MicRim's MicroC modules are found, that's not always the case. Although there are undoubtedly developers who select MicRim for a given set of useful features or the ability to perform at a particular level, Oftentimes, the criteria that separate MicRim from other RTOS vendors in the eyes of customers go beyond such concerns. For years, the defining characteristic of MicRim's products has been quality source code. The developers of every MicRim module follow rigorous coding standards, a policy that is evident from just a quick glance at the modules themselves. Quality source code is more than just an aesthetic concern, though. The attention to detail that is apparent in MicRim's code is, not coincidentally, a hallmark of reliability. And this particular attribute is at the root of MicRim's popularity in the safety-critical world. Product categories that are deemed safety-critical include aerospace components, medical devices, and various industrial control systems. The developers of such products often follow coding standards, much like those established by MicRim. And the developer's output might ultimately require certification, a process through which a government agency or another authoritative body determines whether a particular system and the software that it incorporates could safely be used as its developers intended. To achieve certification, the developers of an embedded system must provide the appropriate certifying body with a massive quantity of test results, specifications, and other documents, which together are referred to as deliverables. The use of MicRim can substantially accelerate the process towards certification because deliverables for the MicroC OS 2 and MicroC OS 3 kernels already exist. MicroC OS 2, in fact, has served as the basis for a lengthy list of safety-critical products going back to 2000, when it was first used in a DO-178B certified aerospace device. 
While this history and the associated certification deliverables are not needed for every embedded systems project, they are highly reassuring to any developer concerned about safety and reliability. MCRIM's developers take great pride not only in their software, but in everything that is provided alongside it. And one of the key accompanying items for any professional software solution is documentation. It's not uncommon for software providers to boast about their documentation, but few companies in embedded software have a history of quality documentation to match MCRIM's. Much of the success of the original MicroC OS, which of course was the forerunner to MCRIM's current kernel offerings, can be traced back to the book that introduced the kernel to many of its first users. Taking a strategy that was unheard of at the time, the MicroCOS book described practically every line of the kernel's code, allowing developers to easily learn how to use kernel services and even how those services were implemented. MicRim's focus on clearly and logically documenting all software has continued to the present. In 2010, MicRim Press was established with the goal of providing texts that benefit the embedded community. Currently, the MicRim Press collection includes seven books on the MicroCOS 3 kernel as well as titles on TCP and USB. The information that the books provide on MicRim software is supplemented by documentation in a range of other formats, including application notes, quick start guides, blog posts, and technical articles. Even when software is accompanied by great documentation, its users sometimes have questions that are best answered by engineers who are familiar with the code. For this reason, MicRim has always maintained a high ratio of support to development staff. The support team is exceedingly responsive and is capable of digging beneath the surface to help MicRim users overcome even the most complex embedded software challenges. One year of free phone and email access to the team, along with free software updates, is provided with every MicRim license. And this level of support is consistently cited by MicRim customers as one of the key factors that influence their operating system choice. Since interaction with experienced developers can be helpful in both solving and preventing software problems, MicRim's customers are provided with access to training in addition to support. Multi-day, hands-on training sessions on MicRim software are held throughout the year in various locations, in the U.S. and abroad, to help licensed users and even prospective MicRim customers quickly get up and running with kernels and other modules. These sessions, the schedule of which is mostly decided by MicRim, are offered free of charge. Similar sessions, but with tailored content delivered on-site, are likewise available at no cost for larger customers. Training and support make an embedded operating system more appealing for users of all sorts, but they can be especially important benefits for developers who are considering open source software for their project. Of course, the appeal of open source solutions is often based, at least in part, on their lack of licensing fees. Such software has no upfront costs. However, the actual cost of developing applications around any operating system, including those available in open source form, can grow quickly if problems arise and cannot be resolved in short order. Such unforeseen long-term costs can be avoided with the support that accompanies MicRim software. While users getting started with a new embedded operating system can often spend weeks getting even a simple example up and running, the process for getting started with MicRim OS on Silicon Labs devices is a highly streamlined one. The OS is delivered exclusively through Simplicity Studio, and it can be found in source code form and a number of software examples within the IDE. A portion of these examples incorporate only the MicRim OS kernel, while other examples include additional components, such as the USB stacks and file system. Simplicity Studio users can access the kernel-only projects by simply logging into the IDE with a valid Scilabs.com account, and they can gain access to the full range of projects by registering a Silicon Labs EFM32 starter kit. The MicRim OS kernel, as will be described in more detail later, is free for users of Silicon Labs MCUs. However, licenses for the other MicRim OS components must be purchased in order to use these components in a commercial application. The source code for the non-kernel components contained in the Simplicity Studio example projects is provided under a 45-day evaluation license, allowing the IDE's users ample time to try out the modules and ensure that they meet their project's needs. The collection of MicRim OS software examples currently available in Simplicity Studio spans four different EFM32 starter kits. Kernel-based examples are available for the PG-1 and PG-1-2 Pearl Gecko starter kits, 
while examples incorporating the kernel as well as the MicRim OS USB stacks and file system are available for the Giant Gecko and Giant Gecko GG1 starter kits. The MicRim OS components contained in these examples are provided in full source code form. For developers looking to get started with MicRim OS modules on a Silicon Labs MCU, there are a number of license types to consider. As has always been the case, MicRim's licenses are all royalty free. There's never an incremental charge for additional volume. MicRim's base license type allows the licensed software to be embedded in a single product for a one-time fee. Under this single product license, volume, again, is not important. The licensed product can be made in any quantity. Each different product, however, requires another single product license. For licensing purposes, MicRim typically distinguishes among products using the customer's own designations meaning that a device with a unique model number or name would be considered a unique product. It's worth noting that each product of this sort is assumed to contain just one MCU. Prospective customers seeking to license more than a single product have plenty of alternative licensing options at their disposal. Of course, one possibility in these scenarios is simply to obtain a different single product license for each of the products. This approach is fine for developers of just a handful of products, but its appeal tends to diminish for larger numbers of products. So MicRim offers additional licenses that expand on the single product model in various ways. There is, for example, a product line license for groups of devices with similar functionality, as well as a CPU license that covers any products that the licensee develops using a specified CPU. The broadest of all of these options is the site license that allows development of any product based on any CPU at a physical location named by the licensee. MicRim's pricing, like the aforementioned licensing models, is easy to understand, and it provides a special incentive for developers who choose Silicon Labs devices. The MicRim OS kernel is entirely free on these devices. While licenses must be purchased for other MicRim modules, Silicon Labs customers can establish a robust multitasking foundation for their applications at no cost. In this presentation, we've covered MicRim's modules from a number of different vantage points, but of course there are many details that we've omitted. If you're looking for additional technical information on the modules, then the best starting point would be the MicRim documentation site, doc.micrim.com, which offers users' manuals and free PDF versions of the MicRim books. If you need additional information pertaining to sales, or if you have pending questions on any other MicRim related topics, you can call or email me, Matt Gordon, using the contact information shown here. Under this single product license, volume, again, is not important. The licensed product can be made in any quantity. Each different product, however, requires another single product license. For licensing purposes, MicRim typically distinguishes among products using the customer's own designations meaning that a device with a unique model number or name would be considered a unique product. It's worth noting that each product of this sort is assumed to contain just one MCU. Prospective customers seeking to license more than a single product have plenty of alternative licensing options at their disposal. Of course, one possibility in these scenarios is simply to obtain a different single product license for each of the products. This approach is fine for developers of just a handful of products, but its appeal tends to diminish for larger numbers of products. So MicRim offers additional licenses that expand on the single product model in various ways. There is, for example, a product line license for groups of devices with similar functionality, as well as a CPU license that covers any products that the licensee develops using a specified CPU. The broadest of all of these options is the site license that allows development of any product based on any CPU at a physical location named by the licensee. MicRim's pricing, like the aforementioned licensing models, is easy to understand, and it provides a special incentive for developers who choose Silicon Labs devices. The MicRim OS kernel is entirely free on these devices. While licenses must be purchased for other MicRim modules, Silicon Labs customers can establish a robust multitasking foundation for their applications at no cost. In this presentation, we've covered MicRim's modules from a number of different vantage points, but of course there are many details that we've omitted. If you're looking for additional technical information on the modules, then the best starting point would be the MicRim documentation site, doc.micrim.com, which offers users' manuals and free PDF versions of the MicRim books. If you need additional information pertaining to sales, 
or if you have pending questions on any other MCRIM related topics, you can call or email me, Matt Gordon, using the contact information shown here, which offers users manuals and free PDF versions of the MCRIM books. If you need additional information pertaining to sales, or if you have pending questions on any other MCRIM related topics, you can call or email me, Matt Gordon, using the contact information shown here.